Hello, and welcome to the GASO Plus 9.7 tutorial phase two, talking about solubility. Solubility is a very critical information because it is dependent on your ionization status of your compound, and therefore the pH. Because the gastrointestinal lumen have multiple pH, depending on localization, for example, in average, a pH of 1.2 in the stomach and more basic pH in the duodenum and the remaining of the GI tract. That implies that, based on the local condition, the ionization status of your compound will change and the solutive value will also change. So, we need to integrate this information in the software when we talk about all absorption. So let's jump into Gastro Plus and enter those information. Here in Gastro Plus, we've just verified in the previous record the IV administration following. Um, okay, let me rewind that. Started at Gastro Plus. Here is the database we have for Metazolam, in which we just verified in a previous video that a PPK model could describe the IV administration in human. So now, because the end goal is to simulate the all absorption, let's create a new record. What I will do, I will copy those information and go to database, copy the record, and name it Midazolam IV. This time, it's a PO administration solution and the dose is 7.5 milligrams and in this particular case there is no need to save the support files because we will create new ones for the PO data click on OK so now we have this new record when we talk about oral absorption, there are two critical factors that need to be think about compared to an IV administration. First is the effective parity value, and that value was measured based on in vitro studies and changed in the first phase of the tutorial. So we don't need to change that value anymore. And the second information regards the solubility. So first thing first, let me just to make sure the record is correct, change the dosage form to IR solution and change the dose to 7.5. So we have that done and we don't need to touch those anymore. When we talk about solubility, as I've presented at the beginning of this second phase tutorial, we have some data uh, coming from literature. The first information we need to change on the main compound tab is the intrinsic solubility. The rule of thumb here is to use the lower solubility measured in vitro. In our case, that solubility was measured as a pH of 9.5 and a value of 0 0.054 was measured. So now we have this information. Let's Keep it this way. Next, we want to import in GastroPlus the old pH versus solubility profile that has been measured in vitro. To do so, you can go to File, Load, and, se and select the option number eight. What I'm doing now, I can just copy from my Excel spreadsheet I've previously showed you and paste those information in these support files. You can click on redraw just to make sure my data are integrated and click on OK and then save. As for any support file, GastroPlus is asking you to save it in your database directory. So you can just do it. I click on save. You can see this message that the lowest pH in the table is 3. 
So the swim heat defined for, the, for this pH will be used for all of the lower pH value, meaning that for the stomach pH, where I have a value of 1.2 in fasted state, the value at 3 will be used, which may not be ideal. So the next phase, and what we want to do next, by clicking on the PK table, and before I can open, because I've made sure some change to my solubility, the software asked me to save this information, so I will click on yes. But now I got this warning that for pH lower than 3, the value that will be used will be around 26 milligrams per milliliter. That may not be correct. So what we want to do, we want to ask the software to fit a model that will describe those data right there, but also extrapolate those information all the way from pH 0 to pH 14. To do so, simply click on fit the model. And that's what the model is doing here. And I will put it in log scale. So you can see that the model is describing the data reasonably well. And also, when the pH is 1.2, the solubility is much higher compared to what you would get at pH 3. In this particular case, it is not really important because the solubility was already really high at pH 3. But for some APIs, you need to really make sure that the solubility versus pH uh, relationship is characterized for a larger range and also all of the range that your compound will face during the absorption and distribution and also elimination. So now we can simply click on accept the fit and save. So now what will happen if I go back to the PK table, that green line is not defining my solubility versus pH. And what gas swappers will do if I close that and go back to the gut physiology, for each specific pH in my ACAT model, gas swappers will find the solubility for that compartment. The relationship gets a bit more complex because it also integrates the biosol concentration and the effect of those biosol on the solubility, but that will be explained in a later video. So far, let's keep it fairly simple and keep it this way. The take-home message of these videos are that the solubility of an API is defined by its ionization status and therefore its PKs. As the pH is changing in the different segments of the GI tract, it is expected that the local solubility will change because of the change in pH. Okay, let me redo that slide. The take home message of these videos are that the solubility of an API is defined by its ionization status. Because the pH is known to change in a different segment of the gastrointestinal tract, it is expected that the value of the solubility will also evolve, and that may have an impact on the regional absorption of the API. What GASOPLUS does for you, it automatically calculates the dissolve amount in the different segment of the gastrointestinal tract by combining the ACAT physiological information and the API parameters being solubility versus pH. And based on that, you can really predict your drug absorption in the different segments of the GI tract. Thank you very much. And I will see you in the last video of this phase two tutorial, focusing on predicting the PK after an oral administration and population simulation. Thank you very much.